Hello, good morning. Um, it's right about 7.45 in the morning. Got Usually start work at 8 o'clock, but if this video goes a little bit over 15 minutes, then it's okay, because I have a flexible schedule. But if you saw the title of this video, I want to talk about um, maybe some of the expectations I had coming into my job, becoming a data analyst, and maybe how they were met or how they were not met. If you notice, I'm sounding a little bit tired was up early, took my wife to work. Um, so bear with me. But I still want to talk about maybe you have some expectations for what a data analyst job is going to be. Or maybe you're curious about what a data analyst job is going to be. And I just want to explain kind of the breadth of how I see data analysis, at least from the point of view of working in my company. I work with approximately 25, 30 other data analysts on my team, through which we do a variety of different things. We also work with a few data engineers, project managers, there's a bunch of people like working in the same sphere as us who deal with a lot of the same topics, but they might be doing, you know, different different roles um, within those topics or within those frameworks, for lack of a better term. Um, first, all I can talk about is my experience. So I, I can't talk about what other people experience as a data analyst. I can't talk about other companies. I can only talk about my experience and how I am experiencing things. I'm not claiming to know everything about data analysis. I hope you don't think that. I hope that's not how I come off. That's not what I wanted to be. I don't want to be the person who thinks they know everything about data analysis when really, you know, I'm a 25 year old um, dude who has two years experience as a full time data analyst. Um, however, like I said, what I can tell you is how I've experienced things. And personally, how I've experienced things as, as a data analyst is that um, my job, what I actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, does not line up completely with what I expected a data analyst to do. And that is for um, two reasons. One, not all data analysts, in any sense of the matter, are going to be doing the same thing. One, it's super dependent on what industry you're in. It's super dependent at what department you might be in at a company. So first off with the industry, I work in health insurance. Um, within health insurance, there's a million different directions you could go. You could be on the payment side, you could be on the product side. So using data to build products for your health insurance company. You could be on the payment side, you could be using data analysis to I don't know, analyze um, payment trends or increasing profitability for your different plans. Personally, I'm on the health side. I'm a population health analyst. And so we deal with population health. We're trying to make our members more healthy, which improves their lives and increases the amount of money that we're able to make because we're not handing out as much money for them to go get, you know, triple bypass surgery, just an example. Um, that's the type of thing we deal with. And we develop programs that help our members get healthier. It helps them save money, which ultimately helps us save money. And that's really what we're doing. We're not trying to increase profits. We're trying to save money. It's good all around because it makes our patients healthy or our members healthier. Um, and it helps us save money because we're not handing out as much money for people to go get, um, you know, surgeries when something bad happens. Rather, we're helping them trying to prevent the bad things from happening in the first place. You can argue all you want that health insurance companies are evil, um, but I really think that the company I work for, we're doing it right, at least from my perspective. Again, because everything's from my perspective. I can't speak for other people. But that's just within the health insurance uh, industry. If you worked for like a tech company, I don't even know what the hell you'd be doing. Sure, you'd be looking at like user metrics or something. You'd probably be super, it'd probably be super boring, honestly, because they're so developed and and ready to roll that um, I feel like you're just going to be like building KPIs and stuff and you might be working on new features. Uh, I don't know. But the point is, depending on what industry you're in, you, even in the same industry, two different companies, you may be having a different, a completely different role between the two companies. Um, so really, what I'm trying to get at is, at least from my point of view, there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all data analyst. You could have all the experience in the world in the world, I think I said a world, probably this world, you could have all the experience in the world and um, you go into a different industry 
you're still going to have a learning curve because you need to understand the intricacies and the quirks and the little things and all of the acronyms and blah, blah, blah about that industry, um, which is kind of a differentiator. That's a good thing. Um, I, I don't see it as a bad thing because sure, well, you might have the skills to be a data analyst. You might know SQL and Tableau and you might know some R or Python and coding and visualizations and you know how to tell a story with data and blah, 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 blah. That's great. A lot of people do. Um, but the differentiator might be how much experience you have in an industry. If you have five years in the insurance industry, you could probably go to any other insurance company. You could probably move around all around the country, maybe even all around the world. Uh, you could probably go to adjacent industries. You could go to hospital systems. You could go to, um, you know, auto insurance from health insurance. You could go to um, pharmaceuticals from health insurance. Like there's, there's, relatively you know easy pivots you could make um once you're in an industry and, and it the the tiredness the tiredness is coming through i'm sorry i'm like uh more celsius but there's easy pivots that can be made from these different industries and that's what makes sense to me um now personally with this all being said i didn't speak too much about my job but to me the other thing about data analysis is that you might not even be doing... What? Come here, close. You might not be doing data analysis all the time. I know. It's crazy. Um, personally, I have talked with my manager and, you know, I love my job, first of all. I love my job. But I almost think it's because I'm doing less and less data analysis as time goes on. At this point, I'm becoming more of maybe what you would consider an R shiny developer. I'm, we're building a large internal dashboard using our shiny. It's very complex. A lot of people commented on the last time I mentioned this, that why the hell aren't you using Tableau? Trust me, if we could be using Tableau, we would be. Um, the amount of complexity in what's going into this, it's almost coming to the point where maybe our shiny isn't the best tool for the job and we should be using, you know, something like JavaScript or I don't even know where to go from that flask Django from Python. I don't know. There's probably a lot of people that know more than me with some of those um, tools and some of those packages in Python, but um, we're almost surpassing the limits of maybe what Shiny was supposed to be. It's possible, but we're kind of like, you know, really testing the limits. We're limiting ourselves because there isn't too many Stack Overflow uh, uh, posts about kind of the problems we're reaching now, which is good and bad. We're kind of, you know, I guess pioneering the R shiny space a little bit um at least for you know what we're trying to do so that's cool that's really cool and I get to use R which is one of my favorite tools to use it was one of the most exciting things in school for me was R I loved R I loved data analysis in R um but after doing some like ad hoc analysis when I first became an analyst it's really it can be boring like it can suck uh, and you can get sucked into a project that you keep coming back to and you're like, I don't want to work on this anymore. Well, too bad. They want to follow up. They want to look at a different population. They want to look at a different region. Uh, you want to do the same thing for the, a different region? No, I don't. Well, too bad because you're doing it anyways. Um, that kind of thing. Um, and that's not how the conversations went. I'm, I'm exaggerating. But the truth is, becoming a data analyst, you might not even be doing that all the time. Um, you probably will at first. Um, but as you become more of an experienced data an analyst, you might be building dashboards a lot of the time. You might be building a lot of visualizations. You might be fitting these awesome, interesting, cool models to segment populations. Like, there's so much different things you can do as a data analyst. It's not just, you know, pull the data, analyze the data, aggregate the data, present the data. Like, yeah, obviously, you're going to do some of that. Um, and as time goes on for me, I do less and less of that. The only thing that sucks, which uh, let me, let me back step. First of all, that can weigh on your mental. Um, if you're not okay with not having a clear job description for me, that's one of the hardest things. Um, I don't think it's necessarily hard, you know, to pivot and do different things. I think it's hard because you don't always have a clear idea on what's expected of you. And that can be hard. It allows you to be creative and flexible, which is definitely a bonus. 
But what it doesn't allow you to do is have a clear definition of what it is that you're being asked to do. Um, when you're always moving and doing different things, it can be hard to know when you're doing a good job um, because you're doing so many different things. You don't really get a chance to get good at one thing. Um, and sure, over time, it'll happen. I've only been here two years, uh, a little over two years, full time. But it can be hard because you're wearing so many different hats, you don't even know, you know, what your what your role is. You don't even know what your main job is. Um, and that's kind of the downside. But the bonus is you learn a lot, you learn fast, it's exciting, you don't get bored. And I think those positives outweigh the negatives. Um, so if you're looking into a data analyst role, here's some things to look out for. Um, what I would do in an interview is if you're concerned about this, if this sounds terrible to you, if you hate the idea of doing a bunch of different stuff and things, then you want to reach out, not reach out. But as you're in an interview, what you might want to ask these managers or whoever's interviewing you is, um, for this role, do you expect that I will be doing a lot of different things, wearing a lot of different hats? Will I be doing some um, maybe data engineering, quote unquote, ETL work? Will I be building dashboards? Um, or will I just be doing ad hoc analysis? Like, get a clear expectation. That's not a question that's, you know, outside the norm. It's not asking too much. That's what you need to know when you're taking a job interview. You're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. And remember that. Uh, you need to know what's expected of you at the role. And if they him and haw and say, well, you do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. If that's okay with you, maybe that's good. For me, that's a good thing. I like to be able to do different things. If I do one thing too long, it makes me want to jump off a cliff. To be completely honest with you, it makes me want to jump off a cliff. But if I was stuck in doing, but when I get to do different things, I get to learn stuff. And that's what I love about building this R Shiny dashboard is that I get to learn um, BigQuery because we like, oh, we need a more efficient way to store data for our application. BigQuery, blah, blah, blah. Then we get into the GCP world. Well, we need to automate ingests um, for the data. We get to use Dataform. Awesome. Learning something new. And that's like a new technology, I'm pretty sure, from the Google. Like, from Google. So we get to learn that. There's not a whole bunch of training on it. So we got to kind of like learn for ourselves. It's exciting. Um, we're moving our environments. So we have internally like a few different environments where our apps can sit. And we just did like a excuse me, an upgrade from the on-prem version of where we're um, showing the dashboard to a cloud version. We learned something. That's exciting. We get to learn all about Shiny. We get to learn all about different things. We get to learn about JavaScript now because we want to customize some stuff in Shiny. I'm learning so much so fast and it's amazing. Um, so if that's something you value, ask about it in an interview. I have plenty of other videos on the channel where I talk about how you can get an interview, uh, which I will link, so make sure you stick around and watch those. But once you get in there, you got to get an idea on what you're going to be doing in the job. So what I didn't expect was that I'd be wearing so many different hats. What I didn't know, too, was that that's actually an awesome thing for me. If that's an awesome thing for you and you think you would like that, keep that in mind. Ask about it in an interview. If you need more structure and you need to be doing, you know, similar things all the time so you can kind of gauge your success ask that in an interview if that's something you value let them know that um because you'd rather have a job i think that you know what your expectations are then you need to build that for yourself you can't go in blindly and then once you realize um they're asking you to do a lot of different things hate it and quit uh it's kind of your own fault you didn't ask um and oftentimes you know, hiring managers, they just want to get, find the best candidate. They're not necessarily always concerned or it's not at the forefront of their mind that, you know, you have wants and desires for what this job or role will be as well. So make sure you ask your questions. That's to me, the most important part of an interview. I always look forward when I'm interviewing a candidate at my job now, um, to what questions they're going to ask. And if they don't ask any, or if they don't ask any that are like particularly interesting, kind of sucks. Um, so have some interesting questions, talk about the job, ask them if they like it, ask them what they do, ask them how many hats they wear. Um, it's kind of a funny way to put it and they might laugh, might be a good thing or maybe not. It depends on your comedic timing. <laughs> but anyways, I hope that helps. I hope that maybe 
clears up the data analysis role. Um, I hope it helps you realize that, you know, it's not always going to be the same. So check this video out next. Also, if you made it this far in the video, I really want you to check out the Discord. Um, I think I'm going to be announcing some pretty cool stuff over there. Um, I want to start doing kind of one-on-one -on -one resume reviews, obviously, um, with how much time that might take. It's not going to be free. Uh, I think it's going to be super helpful for you guys because I get a lot of questions like, oh, I can't find a job, blah, blah, blah. How do you find a job? How do you do this with the resume? Like, it all comes back to the resume and interviewing tips. And I want to start with the resume because that's kind of the first step. Um, so if you're interested in that, check out the Discord. I wanted to leave it till the end because I only wanted people who are really interested in this stuff to see this. But um, thanks for watching. Check this video out next and see you in the next one. Peace.